Hello, welcome to this episode of Mystical Mondays. I am your host, Anna Raimondi. I'm so happy to be with you today. And we have an interesting topic for today. Um, it's about ghosts. It's about why certain spirits decide not to cross over. And this is nothing to be afraid of, by the way. Um, some spirits simply do not cross over to another plane. Many people call these entities ghosts. Call them what you want. And there's a lot of connotation around that that's kind of scary. It's not all like that. Could be, but it's not all the amenable horror. You know, um, most times it's not like that. And there's a way to cross these spirits over because they will make themselves known to you. So why do they stay? Unfinished business. They feel they didn't finish up what they needed to say to somebody or what they needed to do. And they just try to stay to finish it up. Can they? I think they have an easier time of doing that from the other side. Also, it might be from a sudden or traumatic death. And so they're, they're stuck because they're confused. Some spirits have traumatic deaths and get it and go on. And some spirits, spirits don't. And so there is a priest. And if you go on YouTube and you can see my interview with him, his name is Father Nathan. He's a Catholic priest. And he crosses over, in a sense, spirits that have had untimely deaths that are tragic where they're confused and kind of help them understand where they are and what's going on because they could still be in a state of confusion a con confusement that's i don't know if that's a word well they could still be confused um attachments some spirits have an attachment to their house for whatever reason to people to things above the normal attachments that regular normal spirits have when they pass. And some people are afraid of judgment. Some spirits don't wanna be judged on the other side. And so they stay here. And those sometimes are the ones that aren't so great. Now, again, not all these spirits are bad and they do need to be crossed over. They do need to go into the light. So the things you've seen on TV about going to the light, that's true because the light is God. And they will make themselves known more than other spirits. They will move things off counters. They will take your pen and hide it. They will rattle dishes. And these are at the extreme. They will throw things just to get your attention so that they can be helped. Now, your spirit relatives may do things around that, but they're not going to do anything that's destructive. These some and these entities sometimes get a little destructive because they don't feel they're being heard. Now, sometimes a spirit will be hanging around a place, but that doesn't mean they didn't cross over. That just means they want to hang around. Okay. We're talking about spirits that did not cross over. And the spirits that are here, and they weren't good people, and so they're stuck they very often will be the ones that do the hauntings. So I'm going to give you a little example. I had a client once and she lived in a place that was being haunted. Okay. And she was being attacked in terms of things falling off, you know, the counter and her computer having messages on it. It was crazy stuff. And it turned out that the place she was living in the 1800s was a brothel and it was run by a really evil man and he was still hanging around when i saw him it was very scary because the way i saw him he had chains attached to his legs with women on the other side of them cuffed so this is a really bad person um, who really should have been crossed over don't know if he was i wasn't doing it um he may still be there. In any case, um, I'm hoping he's not. So how can you help spirits cross over? Now, there's two things. You want to cross them over. And then you need to ask why. So if you're living in a house 
and you find out that um, there are farmers living in your house that own the farm before you bought the house. And it's a gentle energy and it's a loving energy. And you say, I can coexist with you. I can live with you. Why do you want to cross them over? Um, they're not the spirits that need to be crossed over. Those are those are the good spirits. It's when you feel that someone is in angst, in pain, a spirit, an entity is in pain um, or is doing things that you may not like, or you're being frightened, you can cross them over. The way that you can do that is um, you can bring in a medium or you can ask them to go into the light and pray, you know, prayers of your religion, a prayer that you like, you can pray and ask them to go into the light. You can also bring in a religious leader or someone who does this sort of thing, does sacred rituals. Um, you know, the Catholic church isn't big on bringing exorcists in unless there are proof that, um, that something is going on. You know, um, I, I don't know. I mean, would I, as a lay person want to cross over people? It all depends on the spirit. If the spirit was extremely annoying and, um, you know, and just not behaving in a way that was consistent with my family and making us happy, maybe I would. Okay. But, you know, I think it's best, honestly, if you call in someone who really knows how to do this. So, but if you do, if you want to do it on your own, you know, just tell them to go into the light. You can feel the shift. You, sh you know, you should feel lighter and as they go into the light and you need to explain to them what the light is and that they are dead. Many of them don't even realize that they're dead. Okay. Now, of course, as I said before, not all spirits are, ba are bad. Some of them are just confused. Okay. And they, and it's like, they do things that may not be in the, in the best benefit for you or your family, but there, it's just that they're confused and they're not going to hurt. Okay. Or really scare anybody. That's not what, that's not what they, they want to do yet. Um, there are bad spirits and it's very important to protect yourself from them. So even if you're not Christian, Christian, a very strong protection prayer is the Our Father. The Our Father was given by a Jewish man to Jewish people as an example of how to pray. Um, it's for all people. So I'm going to say it. So if, if you're not Christian, you can listen to the words and you can find it online and you can use this prayer to protect yourself against anything evil. So the prayer is, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In saying that prayer, you also say, I command who is never, who is not from the light to leave this space immediately. And you should have windows open. You can sage if you want to, um, whatever you want to do, but it may take more than one time, but they, they will go. They will go. Um, you know, uh, it is, it, it's interesting because sometimes they come in when there's no boundary set. Ah, uh, you know, like your energy is whatever. Um, you have to set boundaries, okay? Even when um, you, they're they're welcome to stay, you can say, "I welcome you to stay if you do X." You know, if you stay away from us, or you do X, Y, and Z, or you don't do X, Y, and Z. With the bad spirit, you have to command them to leave. I will not allow you in this space. My home is a sacred space, and you are not you are not welcome in it. Again, some people like to smudge um, or sprinkle holy water. Some people put salt around the periphery of their of their home. I don't know why that works. Um, just like I don't know why burying St. Patrick in your front door helps you sell your house, but I don't know. 
um, maybe it's the intention that is attached to it. It's essential to remember with an evil spirit, you may not be able to get rid of them alone. How will you know that a spirit is in your house? Temperature just drop. You'll walk into a room and it's just freezing, even though the heat is on. Again, you will hear things clanging. You will hear things moving, that sort of thing. Again, not all these spirits are bad. Some of them just want your attention. You will feel if an entity is not a good entity. You will feel if it's evil. The feeling of evil is horrible. And the feeling of love is wonderful. So from a good spirit, you may feel this feeling of, I love this place and an evil spirit, I don't. And once again, I'm gonna tell you that the evil spirits are mostly stuck. Not always, but mostly. Sometimes they follow you from place to place. The same thing with the good ones. They may be stuck or they may be following you from place to place. In any case, it's good to differentiate between them. And again, this is up to you. You know, as with any spiritual or paranormal matter, um, your views on it are, are what matters, okay? You know, if you're in a situation where you believe you're encountering spirits or being haunted, it is essential to do what feels right to you. And if necessary, consult with somebody who can help you through this. I hope your homes are all filled with good spirits and filled with love. On that note, thank you for allowing me to share this with you. I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Mystical Mondays.